since the um, next video will be about the linear properties of the integral, I'm going to take probably most of this video to show what a linear map is. Um, <clears throat> I think better to write it. So let um, V and W uh, be vector spaces. Vector spaces over the same field in K. Okay, so we have two vector spaces, V and W, two vector spaces over the same field in K. A function, I'm going to call it f, from v to w, from v to w, is set um, uh, to be to be a linear map if for uh, any two vectors I'm going to call these vectors x and y uh, of course x and y in V. I'm going, yes, right. So X, vectors X and Y will be both in V. And any scalar, uh, let me call this scalar alpha in so the I call this the field K, okay? So uh, and any scalar alpha in K um, the following two conditions are satisfied. So these two conditions will give this the, the, the property of a map of being a linear one, a linear map. Okay, so the two conditions are um, f of x plus y will be equal to f of x plus f of y. Okay, this this uh, property is called additivity. Additivity. That's a uh, um, any function that has this property is called a additive function or an additive map. Okay, so this property is called additivity. F of x plus y equals f of x plus f of y. Um, and second property, f of alpha x, alpha being in the field, of course, equals alpha of f x. This property usually it's called homogen. Oh, let me see if I can write this. Homogeneity. Also of in this case of degree. One, so it's homogeneous degree one. Okay, one function is called homogeneous if f of alpha x equals alpha of f x. In this case, degree one because alpha is of degree one, and of course alpha alpha has to be in the field in in K. Okay. 
Um, sometimes in the definitions, this thing, these two things could be together. Okay, I could put a half a year and, and join them. Of course, if you have a uh, okay, take another page. Uh, if if you have a a a, a function like uh, if v is like x one, x two, etc., x m in v, uh, if the vector space v uh, has many coordinates, so x one, x two, x m in v. Well, then you will have alpha 1, alpha m uh, in k, that was the name I called uh, the field, in k, such that alpha or f of alpha 1, x1, plus f of alpha 2, x2, f of alpha 2, x2, Etc. Till f so f alpha m x m. This will be equal so f of alpha one x one alpha two x two etc. Alpha m x m. That will be equal to alpha one f of x one plus alpha two f of x two plus alpha m f of x m okay and of course following the definition f of zero will be zero okay this is a linear map um, sometimes this v and w can be in, in different um, fields, but I'm not going to get into that. Okay, so I gave you an idea what a linear map is. So these two properties, these two conditions are, has to hold. f of x plus y has to be equal to f of x plus f of y, and additive and the homogeneity. f of alpha x has to be equal to alpha f x. Okay? So now I'm back to, to the integrals and I'm going to show exactly this um, linear. Let me see if my paper is okay. So linear uh, properties, linear properties of the integral. Okay? It's going to be easy to prove that the integral operates in a linear fashion on the integrand and on the integrator, okay? So, so the next theorem we'll, we'll say th theorem um, if f is Riemann and if G is also Riemann integrable on AB, of course, it's always our interval, um, then C1F plus C2G will be Riemann 2 on the same interval, of course, on AB. For any two constants, C1, C2. So C1 and C2 can be any scalar values or any constants. Okay? Um, so written in a different way, we could say um, the integral from AB of C1F plus C2G uh, what was the name? D alpha, right? D alpha equal C1 from A to B of F, D alpha, of course, plus C2 from AB, G, D 
deals. Okay, so this is the linear property of the, the, the integral. Okay, that's proof that's true. Proof that's true. Okay, I'm going to, to call this function c1 f plus c2g. I'm going to call it h. So let h be c1 f plus c2g. So this this will be the, the a new function, function h, and this function is c1 f plus c2g. And we are going to get a partition of AB. Okay, so let us write the the the, the sum. Uh, so sum B partition function H alpha, right? Equal sum from 1 to n h of tk, that's the, the, the definition, delta alpha k, the variation of the interval. And this will be equal to um, Okay, so H is this one, right? C1, F plus C2, G, so I have to write it all. Okay, I'm going to write it. Um, it will be equal C1 sum from 1 to N, F of TK delta of K, plus C2 from 1 to n, G, right? G of TK, uh, delta of a K. Okay. But, um, so, Okay, but C1, C1 sum of FTK plus C2 sum of GTK, right? So this will be the same as C1 sum partition F alpha, right? Plus C2 sum G alpha. Okay, now, uh, we, we are going to get a positive epsilon, and we are going to, to choose a partition, we are going to call this partition P prime on epsilon, um, so that um, P prime subset of P. So P is a refinement of P prime. Okay? Uh, oh, we call, I call it epsilon, right? P prime epsilon, right? Okay, so that P, uh, P prime epsilon subset of P, this implies um, the sum of P F alpha minus the integral from a to b f of t alpha so this this modulus has to be smaller than epsilon right okay so the first one is written um, do not forget that uh, in the problem f and g are Riemann uh, integrable. Okay, so I'm taking that fact. Okay, they are Riemann integrable. 
So this will be true. Okay. Now I'm going to do the same for, I, I did this for F, I have to do the same for G, right? Um, so what should I do here? I'm going to get another partition, same epsilon, positive epsilon. I have to get another partition, I'm going to call it P prime prime epsilon, such that P will be, so P prime prime epsilon will be a subset of P, so P, this partition will be a refinement of P prime, and this implies uh, again, I'm going now. I have to write this with G, right? So, S of P G alpha minus the integral from A to B G d alpha will be smaller than a certain epsilon. Okay. Okay, but now I'm going to take a so I took P prime right before I took P prime here. No, I I took um, yes I took this uh, P prime epsilon and P prime prime epsilon. Now for for those two I'm going to, to say that the union of those two P prime epsilon union. P prime prime epsilon, the union of those two, I'm going, I'm going to call it now P prime. Okay, sorry for this mixed language, but uh, it works. Okay, so P prime epsilon, union P prime prime epsilon, now I'm going to call the union of those two P prime, P, P epsilon, sorry, partition epsilon. Then, this being true, then, um, for P for the partition finer than P epsilon, we have, if I get a partition finer than P epsilon, to the union of those two, we have for sure S of P H, my, the, the, the H, do not forget that H is C1F plus C2G, so H alpha minus those two, um, C1 from A to B, F D alpha minus C2 from A to B, uh, G D alpha modulus, this will be smaller than C1 epsilon plus C2 epsilon. Well, th this can be negative number, so it will, I have to write a modulus here on those two. Okay? And this proves the theorem. Okay? Because this is the very definition of Riemann integral.